Hello all, quick progress report on my barn roof. Um, my chickens in the background have just laid, so they're just letting me know. <laughs> um, there's, uh, we'll have a quick look at the hemp clay spray and how that's dried. Um, and there's a more detailed video of that. You can find where you found this video. This video is mainly the stages after the hemp clay has gone in. So if you want more detail of the hemp clay going in, uh, do go back and search for that video um, and you can find it where you found this one. Hope you enjoy. The clay hemp's dried really nicely. It's absolutely solid. It's like it's, it's as hard as you'd expect the lime hemp to be really. You can see oh, under there, there's the old rafters. It took about probably about three or four weeks for this north side of the roof to dry and it took two weeks if that for the south side to dry so that really surprised me how quick drying it was these days we do a lot of insulation 300 mil is sort of usual and if you bring out normally you bring out a, if you've got a 300 mil rafter full filled with insulation you're bringing out a 300 mil rafter or even 200 mil then you're cutting it at an angle and putting a fascia board on that. You have a disgusting, great big fascia board. Uh, and the way to get around that is to use these. They're called sprockets. So if, if we, if I brought out the whole depth of insulation, I would have it coming right out here and it would have a, I'd have a huge fascia board. If you follow the line on the bottom of this old rafter, which is where the insulation stops, I'd have a huge, great big fascia. But by planting these on top, screwed through, and this applies to new build as well as what I'm doing here. Um, by planting these on top, you can just bring out 100 mil really easily and have a lovely sort of normal size fascia and soffit. And obviously this bit gets filled with the cork insulation. So this is further insulated. There's the hemp, um, and then this is filled with cork. Then I've got my battens over the top. Uh, this bit sort of, this here holds back the cork and also I'm going to put a board on here and um, so underneath you won't need a, uh, you won't need a soffit, you just see the underside of the board which I'll show you on the other side of the roof. And the gable, rather than having a traditional gable ladder, you just plant a big double timber doing the same thing. So I've got another one, I've got another one up here and another one near the top and that will hold the last rafter and fascia board or weatherboard, whatever you call it, on that end. So I'm having to be quite careful at the moment covering it up because it's the weather's turned since I got back from holiday, which has really rather upset me. Here's the roof all cork boarded. There's two layers of cork board because these aren't tongue and grooved. So. Uh, so there's no big gaps between boards. I've double layered them and staggered the joints. And also, uh, you can see from here, if I go up this ladder, it retains the old curviness of the old roof. If you use 50, two 50 mil boards, more flexible than 100 mil. It's hard to see on the camera. Um, So the, you can see now how the, the little sprockets, same on the ends with the gable rafter. And if I take you around here, you can see the layers. So you've got the old, the old rafter, the old tile battens, the hemp clay is, that, is about there, that layer. So this is just a, a uh, batten uh, and then you've got two layers of the cork board overlapped and the wall's going to come up to the underside of that one. Toasty. And I've marked on, I'm going to felt and batten it now, so I've marked on, as I put the cork board on, I've marked where my rafters were uh, with uh, tip X so that you can or so that I can screw through and find the timbers beneath. So I'm going to screw a batten 
there's going to be a two by one batten going up all of these which is screwed through the two by two batten beneath and that will sandwich and keep the cork board in place make it all nice and tight so I'm rather proud of this um, they're the tile, same tiles off the roof uh, lime mortared on the ridge sorry on the um, gable and uh, I think it looks rather smart for my first time doing clay peg tiles uh, I've got a wany edge weatherboard and a wany edge fascia board under there which is local cedar that was cut down on a local estate and under here you can see what I was talking about so you don't have you don't have a soffit you just see and it's hard for you to see because I've pre-painted it black but all you do is see you see the board pre-painted black board under there and the little sprockets and the cladding the cladding eventually will come up to that to that timber and it just means you don't have to cut in a soffit afterwards if I'd got round to it I would have had all this timber under here as the local larch but Unfortunately, I was a bit late with ordering it and I had to just use normal timber, you know, the CLS timber. So yeah, I just got to finish the other side of the room, uh, sorry, on the other side of the roof now in time to bed the ridge on with lime mortar. Before right. too so that's my barn project so far and I'll be doing a video shortly um, about the walls and the makeup of them. Uh, we've got hempcrete going inside, we've got wood fibre on the outside. So look out for that coming soon. Take care.